Hey, GRC Online, welcome back for Digital Care Group. Here we are again, so excited. This is a special one. We are trusting that you had a blessed service, and we really believe that you probably walked out of service encouraged, and here you are for Digital Care Group, and it's going to get even better. want to also mention that if you feel like, oh man, I got something to do, I got errands to run, I got things to do right now, don't worry, this is going to be on demand via the link on your screen. So be encouraged. You can like take your time and listen to this, absorb it anyway by yourself, with family, with friends, with neighbors, however that looks for you. I'm excited to be here. If you're not familiar with me, uh, some of you would be already by this time, but maybe you're not. It's your first time. Welcome. I'm Pastor Josh Hollihan. I get to be the online campus pastor for GRC Online Digital Church. And Pastor Darren is here, our pastoral overseer for GRC online. Welcome, Pastor Darren. Hey, Josh. So good to see you again. And so good for everyone to join us today. Like this is really our family. Again, we're in a digital space, but you know, our hearts are with you. You are our GRC online community. And I'm in Singapore right now and Josh is in Dallas and wherever you're tuning in from, like uh, we're here for you and, and we're looking forward to another great time together. That's right. That's right. And you know, I, I, just, uh, I just got back, Pastor Darren, um, yeah. from uh, from cool. New York visiting you know friends and family I love to hear how your trip was to New York yeah it was awesome it was awesome I, I tried to spend some time uh, at the beach I hope maybe I don't know if you guys <laughs> can, you know appreciate maybe a little bit of the tan I was working towards but uh the nice. beach was good we lo- we loved the beach and we were at the city as well and we got to hang out with friends and family and just enjoy and uh, also just some familiar spots that I can even think back and remember like what God did in some places that I grew up in and just mm-hmm. some past experiences that I had that even led me to be where I'm at right now in Dallas, Texas. So it was fun. It was great. Well, Josh, remember, right? New York was where we first met. That's at right. That cafe and we walked around Manhattan and just had a amazing connection, a spiritual connection. And, you know, it, it, it led to you moving from New York to, to Dallas. That's right. That's right. Definitely did. We had. Uh, I remember we had a lobster roll actually at the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. at the, at the I, New York. I miss. I miss all the healthy food in New York. You know, just like the the hot dogs by the sewer, oh. and you know the lobster rolls, and just you know you name it, all the good healthy food on the street. There's nothing <laughs> like it. There's nothing like it. There's nothing. Yeah. So t- tell me this, Josh. Like uh, for everyone that's tuning in right now from all across the nation. Hey, wherever you're tuning in from, like light up the chats. Tell us where you're, what city you're in, what state you're in. Like this is a a you know national uh, community, and we have international friends that are tuning in from different countries as well. So light up the chats and let us know where you're from. But you know, for those who've never had the opportunity to visit New York, Josh, like what is one thing that that yeah. someone needs to do if, they, if they've never gone to New York City? Man, this is tough, Pastor Darren, to pick one thing. But okay, if I had to pick one thing, it's going to be like a combo experience, all right? This is what I would say to do. All right, get to New York, get a slice of pizza, right? Now, let me just say this. I got to put this disclaimer out there. Not all (laughs) pizza places in New York are created equal, okay? Just like not all barbecue places right here in Dallas are created equal, okay? So this is what you do. You go to New York, (laughs) you get some pizza, but use Yelp some reliable source to be able to find Great. some place that has good reviews, right? Get that slice of pizza, get a regular slice, ask for it well done. That means it's a little crispy on top, little burn marks, the the uh, dough crunches when you split the you know slice in half. That's how you know it's a good slice. Get a regular nice. one, get a Sicilian slice, get a few and go to Times Square, find a place to sit. People watch for a little bit, right? And watch mm-hmm. them, have a good laugh, and then pray for them. They need a lot of prayer over there in New York. Nice. So nice. I think, that's, I think wow. that, that's really that's, that's really specific, Josh. <laughs> I know. I know. Thanks hey, for this telling is, us, you know, how it's cooked, what to order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really, that's I figured I would cool. deliver a detailed experience, Pastor Darren. I can't deliver that, anything that's less. That's great. So that's great. I love it. But Pastor <laughs> Darren, what about what about Singapore? So if someone was well, to come to Singapore, what would be one thing mm-hmm. that you would suggest? Yeah, you've been to Singapore. You know how it's like. You mentioned pizza in New York. I would say come to Singapore, try all the local food, right? We have this thing called satay mm. and you've tried it. Ah. And it's it's meat that we barbecue on an open flame. You know, you can choose chicken, beef and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's incredible. 
And we have all kinds of food and, you know, from Japanese to Italian cuisine. And at the same time, like enjoy the Singapore skyline, right? Yeah. Here's a beautiful picture of the Singapore skyline. It's incredible. It's super beautiful. But the most important thing to do, Josh, when you come to Singapore is to visit New Creation Church at the Star. Yeah, Look at the Star. Isn't it an amazing building? Can you believe this is where we get to worship? Of course, things are still pretty much digital now, but I really pray that when the world opens up, that, that everyone in our GRCO community, our, our digital church community, get, get to visit us in Singapore and come hang out with us, you know, watch Pastor Prince live or be part of our community and just enjoy Singapore. Right? Wouldn't that be crazy? That would be awesome, right, Josh? That would be incredible. I tell you, I watched uh, Pastor Darren for years, right? TV broadcast and seeing Pastor right. Prince deliver the word from the star. When I got to be in the building, yes, it was crazy. I like it. Yeah. Put up the picture, Josh, of you. You know, the picture I took of you and, and Lindsay just in front of the star. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> oh, man, that was great. That will be awesome. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> so we'd love for you all to have that experience in, in Singapore. And, you know, today as we jump into the digital care group, uh, this is our community. This is our home. And we've got something really special, yep. you know, lined up for you today. Right, because most of the time in the last care groups, you've heard me and Josh just like chatting and talking about the word, and and just like like we want to create this experience whereby we get to be in this you know church lobby with you and and have conversations with you wherever you're tuning in from, and and we actually got someone from our community. This person considers GRC Online his home church, and he has an amazing, super awesome testimony that we want you to hear about. That's Josh, right. could you set it up for us and yeah. let's really listen to, to this uh, call-in. That's right. We're excited, everyone. I really believe this, that just like Pastor Darren said, this is a special story because it's someone who calls GRC Online their home church. And we yes. believe that there's many of you that consider GRC Online your home church. And this is one of our son of the house, a son of this house, yes. the digital Absolutely. church, where he shares how he encountered the grace mm -hmm. of God, more specifically through Pastor Prince's ministry while yes. he was in prison. Um, wow. An incredible story. So I want to I just encourage everyone, as you listen to the conversation that we had with Martel, mm -hmm. can we believe as a community that God is going to also breathe fresh revelation, inspire, encourage, and breathe hope into all of our hearts to take more from him because he's just that good. So I want to encourage you right now. Let's check out the conversation that Pastor Darren and myself had with Martel. Martel, it's good to hear from you. Uh, we really appreciate you calling in. Pastor Darren's here. Hi, Pastor Darren. Hi, Martel. Where are you calling us from today, Martel? Um, Jackson, Michigan. Nice. Nice. That's awesome, Martel. Isn't that crazy? We're we're in all different places right now. Where's Pastor Darren at? I'm in Singapore. <laughs> oh, wow. We're only separated by physical distance, but our hearts are with you, Martel. Yeah. Yep. All the way to Michigan. First of all, like Martel, we'd love to hear um, how has this journey started with hearing about the finished work of Jesus, the person of Jesus, um, the abundance of the grace of God, like you being connected to pastor's ministry. Can you just share with us around what time did that take place and what has that kind of been like? It actually started in 2014. When I first seen him on TV, I would watch TBN. And I would watch all the pastors. I think he was the last pastor that would come on. And everybody else before him was American. Then it was him. And I'm like, oh, well, he's a foreigner. He, he, he don't know too much about Jesus, probably. So I wouldn't watch him every morning. Like, this was my schedule. And I'm in prison at the time. So mm -hmm. then I, um, I got transferred to another prison. And there was a young believer who had just experienced, you know, the Lord and um, he would come to me because I was part of the um, pastoral staff there, and he would come to me and ask me questions. And he had a he had the Joseph Prince Death in the Rain book, wow. and he had brought it to me with like tears in his eyes. It was like, what's in this book? Is it true? I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I never read the book. He like, have you heard of this guy? I'm like, you know, I, I know he's a pastor. I've seen him on TV, but I never actually listened to him. He was like, here, I want you to read it. I'm like, okay. I was, I've was. i always been leery. Like when I first, you know, got born again, like reading books and like, I just wanted to stay in the Bible because I really didn't know much. So I didn't want to get misled. 
But for him, I'm like, you know, I read it or whatever. So I took the book, went back to my cell. I read it like the first like page. I was like, well, not even the page. I think it was the introduction. And I'm just like, wow. So I read it all that night. The next day I read it again. Um, there was another brother that I was close to. After I read it those two times, I gave it to him, let him read it. He came to me. He's just like, man, like, you know, we just discussing what we read and um, ended up, he gave it back. I read it again. Then I took it back to the um, young brother and I told him like, it's true. Like as I'm reading the book, I'm going through the scriptures and back and forth. And I'm like, everything that, you know, he is saying is true. And what was even bigger was some of the things that the pastor was sharing in those, in that book, I had already been trying to share with the other believers there in the ministry. And, you know, everybody had, was from different backgrounds as far as denominations. So everybody believed different things. And I'm trying to share with them, like, look, like it's in the scripture. So Pastor Prince was like, was like another voice that confirmed, you know, what I was already hearing, which for me, like, it was getting to the point where it's like, like, am I crazy? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I reading into something that's not there? Am I pulling from the scripture something that's not there? Because it was like nobody else was in agreement with, what I was trying to, you know, show in the scriptures. So when Pastor Prince came along and I'm sharing that with them and things of that nature, and it was just like a breath of fresh air because I wasn't alone anymore and people couldn't just write me off or brush me off like, oh, you know, you're young, you're a new believer, you need to read some more and, you know, things of that nature. So, but no, you couldn't tell me nothing other than grace. Like you couldn't tell me not like you you wow. couldn't come to me and preach law because I could go to the scriptures and I could shut it down. Even if you don't agree, I can show you from scripture, you know, through the leading of the Holy Spirit that, you know, you're wrong. Like your interpretation of the scripture. And if you got it from somebody else, I don't care how long they've been in ministry or how long they've been born and it according to finished work and they're wrong. And I have no problem with telling you that I still love you. We can still fellowship, but yeah. you're wrong at the end of the day. And that was the biggest thing in prison was like it was work involved. Like they everybody wanted to say you had to do something, you had to do this, you had it. And I'm just like, that can't be. Like if that's true, then everything that you know is in the New Testament is wrong. There should be no New Testament if you know there's work on our part involved outside of you know believing and you know, being in agreement with God and what Jesus did on the cross. So, like, I start believing, like, you know, I'm going home early. I had a 10-year sentence, and, mm -hmm. you know, everybody like, well, everybody that come to prison believe that God's going to get them out early, so on and so forth. But I'm just like, well, I'm going to be the first one. Then if nobody else has had it happen to them, you know, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be the first. You know, like, I'm going to believe until, you know, it comes to pass in my life. I had a big case. So originally it was like 30 to life. I ended up with 15. Well, I ended up with a plea for 15 and I didn't take that because of my, you know, what I believe God had spoken to me. So I didn't take that plea. I ended up with a 10 year plea, got sentenced and everything. And it was just like, I still didn't believe like 10 years was what God had, you know, in store for me. And everybody was just like laughing and making fun of me. And I'm just like, you know, that's fine, whatever. You know, when it's all said and done, I have the last laugh. So, you know, as time progressed and went on and I stayed in the word that whole time, I stayed part of the, even though the ministry, people wasn't being born again at the rate in which I seen in the Bible. And I always was like, well, it's something that we're doing wrong. It's something that we're preaching and teaching that isn't right. If people isn't being drawn in, because when I read the Bible, they were coming by the multitudes. And I'm like, yeah. what has changed between then and now? That's really good, Martel. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible story. I just, you know, have a question for you. Was there a particular teaching from Destined to Reign from Pastor Prince that, you know, you really experienced and, and you felt was that great source of hope and encouragement for you? There were two, the love right. of God and mm -hmm. no condemnation. Like yes. understanding that, you know, I didn't have to be in expectation of God's judgment, you know, not just today, right now, but also in the day of judgment. Like I didn't have nothing to worry about. Like it's, it's free. Like I'm not looking to say, am I making, am I doing the right thing? Am I not doing the right thing? Or, 
am I thinking the right thing? You know, it's just like, I'm just free to just enjoy everything that God has given us in Christ and in this world. And just a breath of fresh air where an excitement, like I wake up excited, I go to sleep excited. And it's just, I come to people at work is like, you're probably the only one that's excited to come to work. And I'm like, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> like, that's I don't great. know. I love it. You know, like if y'all knew who I knew, then y'all would mm-hmm. you know, be excited mm-hmm. to come to work too. It's incredible, Martel. Uh, share with us more about the no condemnation portion. Like you talked about the love of God and then this teaching of no condemnation. Like, like how did that impact you? And how, how does that lead to a, a transformation that you experience? And, and tell us the story also. Yeah, like, like tell us more the, about the transformation. I'm in prison for things that I did. Like, I never denied that. Like, everything, really, I did more than what they had actually caught me for. And I'm fully aware of this. Like, I have the prosecutor and everybody else just bringing up my past, bringing up everything I did, have the devil, you know, in my ear. And it's just like, when you, you, you start to feel so bad about yourself because it's like, man, like, I'm really a bad person. Like, I really you know, messed up. You know, I've destroyed lives. I've helped destroy communities and families and so on and so, so forth. And it's just like, how do I remedy, you know, this thing? And when you look at it, like, there's nothing I can do in and of myself. I, there's not enough time in this world for me to do enough good works to make up for that. And it's just like, you know, either, you know, you believe what Jesus did and what he did on the cross is enough to satisfy the justice of God, or you live in that condemnation. And if you live in that condemnation, then, you know, that cycle just continues and gets worse and worse to either, you know, you wake up one day and, you know, you've hurt somebody in the worst way or you hurt yourself in the worst way. And for me, like I was at the point of suicide, like it had gotten so bad. And like I said, I had picked up the, before death and rain, I picked up the Bible and read about Paul's story. And it was just like, well, I'm not as bad as Paul. You know what I'm saying? I haven't done as, you know, those things Paul did. But if God can forgive Paul and use Paul, then, you know, maybe there's hope for me. And that's what led me to, you know, receive Jesus Christ and, you know, just dig into the word and, you know, just get rooted and grounded in in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And since then, um, like I said, I got out of prison three and a half years earlier than what I was supposed to. Um, Got an amazing job, just bought a new vehicle, back with my family, back with my daughter. And, uh-huh. and and it's not the end. My daughter had eczema real bad. And, you know, I've been praying for years for her. And recently, um, God has given me the revelation of the name of Jesus and how to um, use it, uh, speaking to the eczema in Jesus' name, you know, for a week or so. And yesterday I had looked at her skin and I'm like, dang, like your skin looks really good. And she like, I, she was so excited. Like, yeah, I know. Look at my neck, dad. And I'm looking at her neck. And I'm like, wow. And I start looking at other parts of her body. And she was just like, like, like it's getting better. And I'm like, I know. I'm like, do you know why? She like, yes, dad. I'm like, why? She like, because of Jesus. I'm like, you remember when I prayed? She like, yeah, it was the most awkward time of my life. But I remember that. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I'm like, as long as I just want you to know. Right. And I began to explain to my my wife well she was like you know i've really been on top of you know keeping her lotion and keeping her skin moist and later on when my daughter wasn't around i'm like it's not the lotion i'm like i found a better way to pray and she's like what do you mean and i began to explain to her you know how um you know speaking to the eczema is prayer you know and her eczema is like i said is better than it's ever been so it's a lot like i said the 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 testimonies, the the things that God is doing is just keep rolling in. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Hey, Martel, could you help me with this? There are some people who listen to the gospel of grace and they, they misunderstand it. They, they think it is the license to sin, that it's okay to sin. Mm-hmm. Like in your own experience mm-hmm. of, you know, encountering the gospel of grace through Pastor Prince's ministry, like what will you say about that? Absolutely not true. For me, it was like, I didn't enjoy sin no more. Like in my spirit, it was like, I don't, I didn't want to be doing it. I didn't enjoy it. didn't feel good. But then there was, there's the flesh that does enjoy it. And because I didn't initially understand the difference between the flesh and the spirit, it's kind of like having two minds. And I'm just like, like, it's like going, like you're going crazy because you don't understand it. But once you know, I begin to understand the difference between the flesh and the spirit. And, you know, God gives us 
that grace and then he gives us the grace to make the right choice of mm-hmm. choosing the spirit over the flesh and it's, it's not easy at first because you're used to choosing the flesh mm-hmm. but you know as times goes on and you continue to receive grace it gets easier and easier and the voice of the holy spirit begins to drown out you know the you know the 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 flesh and even the voice of the devil and leading you you know out of sin and away from sin so you know like i said since i was 13 i've sold drugs used drugs um like i said lost my virginity at 13 like you name it you know i've been into it i've done it i've you know the whole nine and right now today like even my friends you know they're still into that lifestyle and they tell me every day like man like you're encouragement to us because you know Mm -hmm. you made it out without having to, you know, spend the rest of your per- life in prison or in a grave. Like when people say that, like grace is, that's the devil telling them that. And they don't realize that it's the devil telling them that mm-hmm. because the more that they believe it, the more that the devil can keep his, you know, keep them in bondage. For me, you know, knowing, you know, the grace of God and having experiences is just like, that's absurd. You know, you need to experience more of his grace. There was a point in time where like, uh, when I first got out of prison, I was having a hard time getting into the word, finding the time to get into the word. And right. I began to condemn myself for it. Cause I'm used to being in the word so much being in prison, having all that time where the Lord was just like, just listen. Right. And I, li- I'm talking about for months. Like I just listened, like even at work for eight hours, I'll put in my AirPods and I would just listen to sermon after sermon, after sermon, after sermon. After sermon. And now it was like, I didn't want to listen to sermons no more. And the Lord was like, now read, read now. And now I'm opening up the Bible. And I'm like, whoa, like, man, like that's been there the whole time. Like, did somebody <laughs> just put this here? And it's just like, he like, it's just, like I said, like, it, when you tell that to somebody that don't know, they'll be like, no, you can't do that. You can't. And I'm like, yes, I can. I'm following the leading of the spirit. Like, he may not be leading you that way but this is how he's leading me. So it's all according to, you know, the word at the end of the day. So. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Martel. You're a great source of encouragement and inspiration. You are a new creation in Christ. Grace has transformed your life. Grace has given you a new life and you're preaching the gospel. You know, I just believe together with Josh that God's going to use you in a big way, Martel. God's going to use you in a big Mm -hmm. way. And whatever has happened in the past, right? God's going to take that and He's going to give you a glorious future for your daughter, for your family, and everything that the enemy has tried to steal and, and rob from your life. Like, we just want to believe with you that God will restore much more. Amen, Josh? Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. I received that. Martel, it's, uh, it's amazing. I feel like you're planted in your community on purpose by God, you know, yeah. and that's what yeah. GRC online is about. Look at you're you're carrying like the person mm-hmm. earthen vessels, right? Yes. You're carrying right. the person of Jesus and his finished work in your community, in your hood, in your area, where you're connecting with people who you used to do other things with. They're seeing the evidence of your receiving has mm-hmm. produced good fruit and results, transformation, restoration in your family. Uh, time that you should have spent in prison reduced and dropped by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And seeing that your life has truly been transformed, Martel, is really an amazing testimony. People listening right now, people are in situations right now, different ones, they're encouraged, and your community is being encouraged by you. We're so thankful for you. And uh, we really look forward, Martel, to continue to connect with you at uh, Mm -hmm. GRC Online every time we gather Mm -hmm. for Digital Care Group and for service. Hey, Martel, what has the, the online church meant for you? Uh, has it been a, a support and help to you? Yeah, it gives me a place where we're in agreement, like we're of one mind. I mean, I prayed and was like, you know, Lord, just lead me to somewhere where you want me to be. And the next day, the very next day I prayed that prayer, I had an email from y'all talking about y'all was starting the Grace Revolution Church Online. I'm like, oh. all right, that's it. <laughs> like, that's where I'm at. Like, and oh. I've been there ever since. And even like, I've invited people. Nobody's really started coming besides my family, like my, my wife and my, my, my children. But my mom, I talked to my mom on Father's Day and she's going through a lot. And she was just asking me like some things I went through as a child, like, how can I forgive her? And I'm like, the gospel, like, what are you talking about? Mom, you're a believer, you're a Christian, you should know these things. 
you know, and I just took that time on Father's Day to just minister to her. And she was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to start coming on Sundays to, you know, sit at your house and, and really, you know, listen to what, you know, the pastor has to say. And I'm like, that's fine. Like, you don't have to feel like you obligated to be at the church that you're at. You know, I'm not trying to steal you away. Like, no. you can come and get, you know, what it is that God has to you through Pastor Prince and take it back to your church. Mm-hmm. And he can yeah. use you there. Like, you know, this isn't, you know, I'm not trying to make you a disciple of me. I'm not trying to make you a follower of me. I'm trying to help you get, you know, the fullness of the gospel, the blessing of the gospel. And be like, you might be the one person that God uses me to touch millions. Like, I might not, you might be the only person that I ever am able to, you know, get the gospel to, mm-hmm. but you may touch, you know, millions. You may touch one other person that touched, you know, you never know. Like, so, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, it's just a, it's just a, it's a good space. It's a, it's a space where I feel protected. I feel cared for. I feel like I'm getting the right food, the right nutrients. And, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, whether or not I'm going to get something that's poisonous to, you know, my soul and my mind. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We're very honoring, uh, Martel, to all churches, all leaders and all pastors. So I appreciate that yep. you're honoring to that as well. And, and we're glad that you found GRC online and that even right now, yep that you know, you're know you in Michigan and I'm in Singapore and Josh is in Dallas and we can hang out and fellowship just like we're in a, a church lobby, right? Like we're doing church. Yep. Yep. We're talking about Jesus yep. you, and, and everyone that's tuning in to our care group today, that they are so encouraged by your testimony, Martel. And we know it's just yep. the beginning and we're excited. And, and you know this is family. We may not be able to hang out in a cafe or in a physical space, but hey, the Lord gave us technology that we can be connected this way. That Imagine from reading Destined to Rain, like, uh, you know, so many years ago, like you're here with us, part, part of this family, part of this Grace Revolution Church online family. You're one of us and, and we, we, we're excited for you. We embrace you. We embrace your entire family. And, and this means the world to us. Isn't that incredible? Amazing. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm very appreciative and thankful as well. Thank you so much, Martel. Yep, we, thank can, you. We, we just look forward to continuing to connect right here at GRC Online. We love you so much. You mean so much to this community. And we pray that many beautiful days are experienced in your family and from there overflow into the community that God's planted you in. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank Thanks you. for calling, Martel. We'll, we'll check in with you and we'll, we'll love to connect again, all right? And one day we'll see each other. Right, whether in Dallas or in Singapore or Michigan. <laughs> right? All right. All right. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thanks for calling in, Martel. Wow. Amazing story. I mean, incredible story yes. that we just heard from Martel, uh, Pastor Darren. What a precious story, mm-hmm. right? That we just heard. Mm-hmm. Absolutely yes. amazing. And we really believe that as you've all heard Martel's story, that your heart's been warmed after the one who has never ever, ever had his eyes taken off of you. He loves you so much. And what really moved me about this story, Martel's story, is it reminds me of the scripture verse that Pastor Prince has said so many times that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came, came by Jesus Christ. Intimate, personal. It reminds me of Martel's story because grace and truth came to him while he was in prison, while he was confined In prison, the book Destined to Reign made its way to him. And that's amazing to me that God is able to, through this ministry, because I just want to speak more specifically to that. Through this ministry, we hear a story like this where the truth about Jesus, the perfection of his finished work has made its way into prison to impact the life of someone like Martel, who was looking at a sentence of 10 years. Uh, Imagine how heavy that can feel. You know, if that's it what's on you. 30 to life, right, Josh? Like 30 to sharing. life. And, yeah, yeah, 30, 30 to life, life to start yeah. with. And then yeah. and then the 10 years. So, I mean, even to start with 30 to life, then to say 10 years. But then he said, you know what? I'm not even accepting that. Yes. Um, what really moved me about this story is how grace and truth came to him, but also how he was saying, Pastor Darren, that, you know, he felt like the Lord was trying to communicate some truths to him about the grace of God, about the love of God, about the forgiveness of sins. But he also didn't have maybe a lot of people around him during that time 
that could help him confirm that what he thought he was hearing from God in the word was true. And so what really moved me was how God uses people. He raises people and he Mm -hmm. raised past the prince and even the young man who got the book, who gave it to Martel to really confirm and give Martel confidence like he never had before that what he thought he was hearing from God was in fact true. It wasn't just something that made him feel good with no justified foundation. It was Mm -hmm. justified and backed up on a foundation that is solid, which is the word of God through Pastor Prince's ministry. And what really touched me too was that not only like was he impacted in prison, but he was believing God to even reduce the sentence, even in the face of people maybe making fun of him and stuff, but he had such confidence in the grace of God that he was impacted in prison. But when he left and he got out of prison, not only did he get like a job, his family was restored. Um, the car that he talked about, he was freed from the lifestyle, the transformative power and the evidence of God's grace in his life and how yeah. people around him in that very community that he caused trouble in, like he, he owned up to it, which I feel like that's a big thing too. Like he owned up to it, but he didn't attach his identity to what he did. He attached his identity to what Jesus did for him and that caused real transformative power to be effective in his life. That, that's what really moved me. Pastor Beautiful. Darren with Martel's Beautiful. story. What about you? Well, you know, Josh, just hearing Martel's testimony, like it, it hit me in deep places in my heart. Mm. You know, it, it moves me to tears, like as a minister and so, as a pastor and, and supporting Pastor Prince all these years, you know, like it, it really makes all that we do, Josh, mm. like uh, make sense. Yeah. Like this is what it's really about. You know, we're not just about, you know, publishing books for the purposes of publishing books. Like it's for Martel. Yeah. It's for someone that's like going through a really difficult time and somehow to imagine that, you know, for some of you who are who may not be aware that Destined to Rain was written by Pastor Prince uh, 14 years ago now. And I'm sure Pastor Prince would not never have imagined in his wildest imagination that a book that he had written in Singapore 14 years ago would find its way, you know, to Martel in Michigan. And whatever location his, you know, he, he talked about some prison transfers and all that. And, and the book can find its way to a prison, to someone who is reading it and asking Martel, is this for real? Mm-hmm. Is this book for real? It's what this pastor is saying in Destined to Reign for Real. Like who would have thought, Josh, that the book would make, like that God would cause this book to, to traverse time and space and, and prisons and, you know, go where, play, where, where you know, like, you know, Pastor can go himself. Yeah. Like we can go through, you know, prison doors yep. and, and the gospel can be sent, you know, to places that you can't just walk into and find Martel. So that's why oh, when no, I think no. about that and I think about Martel, your story, like I, I'm I'm touched beyond words. It's it's moved my heart so much and, and it makes it all worthwhile. And, and you know this, when I hear Martel's story as well, like Josh, I don't know if you know this, but in this last decade of this book going forward, like it's reached more than half a million people. Wow. This book. Wow. Like it's reached like close to over 600,000 people. So I think about the stories. Hearing Martel's story makes me think about all the different stories that are mm. out there. Like we've received many testimonies. Even though the book is written, you know, that many years ago, today, Josh, we're still receiving testimonies from people who are encountering this resource by Pastor Prince, this special book, Destined to Reign, for the very first time. So we received many stories, but I think about all the different stories and testimonies of people being set free from guilt and shame and wrong believing and condemnation. And, and you know, it just touches me in, in very, very special ways, Josh, right? Isn't it incredible that we get to be part of supporting Pastor Prince, advancing the gospel, and it's it, this is what it's all about. It's about Martel and everyone that's that's listening and, and that has been touched and moved by, by the book, Destined to Reign. It's absolutely amazing, Pastor Darren. And uh, I know that there's many people watching right now that have just heard that story that it's even bringing back to them maybe um, remembrance. Maybe they read Destined to Rain. Maybe yes. some people that are here haven't read it. But, you know, what we can all say is that whether you read it, whether you didn't read it, the Pastor Prince's ministry, what we've yes. heard through what has happened in his ministry, whether it be through the books or TV broadcast, or even right now, if you're here with us and you're new, 
Um, what has really happened is it's caused us to see Jesus in the most accurate way. And it's caused us to fall in love with our Savior, the one who loves us so, so much. And yes. everything from that has been yeah. like fruit that glorifies God and causes others to see that they have hope to come close to a Savior who is drawn near to them. It's amazing. Amen. And for yourself, uh, Josh, like, what does Destined to Reign as a resource and a book mean to you? Well, uh, Pastor Aaron, it's hard to kind of, um, you know, put it into words because uh, it really is. Because, um, you know, this this book, Pastor's book, um, really changed my my family tree forever. The course of my family tree, the course of my family. Wow. Uh, really because um, when I got the book, you know, I was uh, 24, so it was 12 years ago, 24 years old, I just gave my age away for everyone It's wondering, um, 24 years old, read the book, you know, and, you know, grew up in church, so blessed by that, but you hear a lot of different things, and not necessarily from even, you know, the church I grew up in, just, just in general, um, that can cause you to feel like, You've gone too far and there's no hope for you to draw near to God. And I feel like when I read Destined to Reign, the reason why I can say my family tree has changed forever is because I saw page after page, Pastor Prince reveal and unveil Jesus as the tree of life that I can boldly yes. come to no matter what mess I was in at the time, which I was in a uh, mess, mm -hmm. lifestyle that I shouldn't have been in. And really being sincere though and trying to have a walk with the Lord in a certain way, but it felt like, not because I wasn't sincere, but because I was, I felt like a hypocrite. I felt like I've gone too far, that I have to work my way back to Him according to how well I'm behaving. And I felt like as I read the pages in Destined to Reign, how it was revealed to me, the person of Jesus through Scripture, that He's very approachable, that all my sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future, that my sin is not holding me back, that my sin is no match for God's grace. It caused me not to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go out and do whatever I want. It caused me to come to him. And from that place, I experienced crazy transformation that has led me to be where I'm at today, somehow, some way, by the grace of God, to be a, to be a pastor um, at Grace Revolution Church in Dallas, Fort Worth. We're doing this together now, Josh. How we're doing, doing this it's together now. Grace Very is special. spectacular. Right, grace is spectacular, Absolutely. and it's through the person of Jesus. And and for me, Josh, like when I think about Destined to Reign, you know, Martel's story has really just inspired me to reread the book mm. and really get into it. I'm sure there are things I used to understand, you know, ten years ago, and and now even now when I'm going into it, like I'm just refreshed. Mm. So for those of you who may not be aware, the title of Destined to Reign actually comes from this scripture. It's found in Romans chapter 5, verse 17, right? Shall we read it together? It says that those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Amen? Reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So destined to reign, right, comes from, it's not just an empty promise, it comes from a scriptural promise yes. that shows you how when we take the time to go before the Lord, before the cross of Jesus, and receive from Him the abundance of grace, not the trickle of grace, yep. but an abundance of grace and righteousness as a gift, not righteousness that comes from working out our salvation, uh, working out you know approval from the Lord, and working out trying to find ways to please Him, but really receiving wholeheartedly, Lord, whatever you have accomplished on the cross, I receive that as my righteousness today. Not because I am right and good and perfect in, in all respects, but because of your precious blood. And it's a promise. The promise in Scripture tells us that when you receive this abundance of grace and gift of righteousness, you are destined to reign mm. in life. So I encourage you, if you have the book, like, you know, Find it in your bookshelf, you know, and, and just to start reading again. I, I, I did that, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I did that just like today. I, I read an electronic version on my iPad. And, and today I was just reading chapter eight. Wow. And, and there's this section in chapter eight that talks about the importance of rightly dividing the word. Mm. And Paul says this, right? He says, there is a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion and wrong believing in the church today because many Christians and many believers read their Bibles without knowing how to rightly divide the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. 
right? That's such a vital thing. Mm -hmm. Like if you read all of scripture and you are unable to learn the skill of dividing what is old covenant pre the cross of Jesus and what is new covenant post the cross of Jesus and what it means to you, all his promises, all his favor, all his blessings, all his good success and wisdom that is towards you today. Like that's just such a vital truth that I'm just feeding on like today, this, you know, at, at this time, just before our recording. And so I'm really excited for you to dive into it. And we're going to do something really special today. Are you ready for that? We're going to do something really special. Awesome. I know we're a digital church, but we want to put something physical in your hands as well, right? We're a digital church, but you know, we want to put something physical in your hands. So today we're going to do something special where like, if, if, you're, if GRC Online is your home church, right? Wherever you're tuning from in America, right? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. this is limited to America. Like uh, we have some constraints. I, I seek your gracious understanding on that. But if GRC Online is your home church and you're based in America, like, you know, we have 250 copies of Destined to Rain that we want to send to you, right? Wow. If you have a copy, read it. But we just want to bless someone who is part of this community, calls this their home church, has never had an opportunity to read Destined to Rain, right? You've heard Martel's story. You've heard Josh's story. You've heard a little bit of my story. And there's so many stories that have come in. Like, we would love for you to read this book and experience your own breakthrough, your own transformation in your life. Whatever you may be dealing with right now, the Lord desires for you to reign in life through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's incredible, Pastor Darren. I'm so excited for yeah, all the people. Maybe Josh can give them the details of how to get this resource. Yeah, so you go to um, gracerevonline.com forward slash rain. And from there, you can you know go through different things that Pastor Darren said. First of all, we really appreciate the understanding that it, it is for people based in America. And yes. you call GRC Online your home church. And you've never read the book before. So we just appreciate you going to the... Uh, website, the link on the screen, you can use that. And we really believe that as you get the book and you read it, that the Lord's going to do something special and new in your life, even in a way that we just heard in Martel's story, for whatever thing that you're going through, whatever your situation is, whatever it looks like for you, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. And we'd love to hear your story. We, right? we would love to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'd love to. If you're, able, if you're able in your own community like I know when Josh was in New York, right, Josh? Yeah. When you had your young adult meetings and all that, like you used to put copies of Destined to Rain in the table behind and, yeah. and just for people to pick up and, and go read it for themselves. Is, mm -hmm. is this the real deal? Is yeah. the gospel of grace the real deal, right, Josh? Yeah. So if you're able to, we'll, we'll encourage you as well. Even as we're giving these books out, we encourage you to be a part of this and 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 get this resource. And, you know, if, if it's just sitting in your shelf, like pick it up and, and bless someone with it. Right. Yeah. And if you're getting a copy, like we would love to hear from you. Right, Josh? Like where, where can they send their praise report, Josh? Absolutely. We know that there's so many stories out there and your story is valuable to us. So you go to the website and you go to connect and under connect, you'll see it says submit praise report. And you just go right there and share with us what has God done in your life through this ministry, through the revealing and unveiling of the person of Jesus and uh, we, we'd love to just hear more and more because it just causes Pastor Darren in my heart to just mm -hmm. overflow with thanksgiving as to how God has caused this grace revolution to sweep yes. across America like, like crazy. Yes, that, that's what we get to do. And this is what we're all about. This is what Pastor Prince's ministry is all about. It's all about Jesus. Yes. It's all about Jesus impacting, transforming, and touching your life with the gospel of grace. Yes. Right. It makes yeah. it worthwhile for us to put all our energy, all our resource and all our strength into serving you and ensuring that there is a way for you to get in touch with the power of his grace, because it is transformational. It will change your life in a, in a radical way. You know, as we close out today, I hope you've been really blessed by, by this special digital care group. I know there's not been a lot of teaching, but we really want to inspire you and encourage you to get into the teachings in Destined to Rain. You may have read it many years ago, but I, I know that there's so much that will just jump out at you in a fresh way that you've never seen before. And we'd love to hear from you. Like put it in our in the in the comments and in the chat. Like when, when it comes to you, when the Lord begins to speak to you and touch you with this resource, it's a really special resource. Like we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. And, and we never like to close out our digital care group without just taking a few moments, right, to pray and, and believe with you. 
So can I just, you know, just wherever you are right now, whatever needs or challenges that you are faced with right now, can we just take a moment to just like pray together, right? Just like we're in a regular care group, like we want to close out and just believe together with you. So bring your prayer requests, bring your, you know, what, what's been burdening you this entire week. Let's just come together, you know, like Josh and I, we join our face with you. We join our hearts with you and we want to pray and believe with you for your breakthrough. Should we yeah. pray right now? Yes. You know, Lord, yeah. Lord Jesus, I, I thank you, Lord, for the Grace Revolution Online community, for every single person that's tuning in right now. Lord, even for someone, you know, who may be in a physical prison right now and they're listening to this, Lord, Lord I thank you, Lord, that they will find encouragement and hope and strength through, through, through Martel's testimony. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they, they, if they're feeling lonely and, and just in a state of hopelessness, Lord, Lord, bring forth your presence in a tangible way. Bring forth your hope in a strong way. Bring yeah. forth your strength and encouragement, Lord, in a strong way. And Lord, like for, for someone else that you know may not be in a physical prison, but they feel imprisoned by fear. Mm. They feel imprisoned by anxiety. They feel imprisoned by, by depression. You know, Josh, I just feel like there's a, there's a strong anointing today that the Lord just wants to touch people Mm. Uh, from everywhere this has been dealing with you know chronic depression mm. not just depression in the last week or what just years and years of depression you know my dear friend if you're listening to this right now the yeah. Lord hears your cry yeah. the Lord sees your tears the Lord is with you and in this prison of depression there's no way that you can use your intellect or logic to just get out of depression right I just pray that as we've spoken about today that you will receive right now in Jesus' name, the abundance of His grace yeah. and this free gift of righteousness that was purchased for you at the cross at Calvary. I pray that you receive that right now to of overflowing that will cause you to reign out of this prison of depression. Yeah. That this thing that has like, you know, blocked you from seeing hope for even having a motivation to get out of bed. I pray that you receive right now through time and space this infusion of joy and peace and yeah. happiness that comes from the Lord, that comes from the abundance of His grace and the gift of righteousness. I pray that from this day forward, supernaturally, you'll be set free from this yeah. prison of depression. In Jesus' name, I break that evil power. Yeah. I take authority. I break the evil power that has held you captive all these years. And we break those prison doors and He who the Son sets free yeah. is free indeed. Can yeah. I have a good amen? Amen. You are free indeed. In Jesus' name, you are free from depression. In Jesus' name. Suicidal thoughts are far from you. Yes. Your thoughts are now filled with just life and abundance of life and, and peace and shalom and joy. There is hope for the future. The Lord is with you. No weapon formed against you can prosper. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. For even people that are watching right now, people that are listening and tuning in right now, Lord, that even as they heard how Martel told his daughter that it was Jesus that healed her from the eczema, Lord, I thank you their parents right now that they even have a heart to shepherd their children's hearts to you by seeing certain things that are um, just coming against their bodies completely made well and healed. And Lord, right now we just speak even that there's a special anointing upon each parent right now to be able to take authority over even what could seem like the smallest thing that we can just accept in life to believe that you care about all the details, Lord. So we just speak to that right now. We thank you that parents are just um, even right now being encouraged that they have authority to speak over their children and for their children to be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you that fresh breath and revelation of your love for them is coming right now to many people who feel like they've become familiar with grace. Lord, I thank you that that familiarity is leaving and a new intimacy is being breathed into them even right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for this community. And we thank you, Lord, that you know every situation. You know every desire they have. You know every request and every need. And we just say right now, Lord, grace, grace to all of it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Amen, amen, amen. That was awesome, Pastor Darren. I've enjoyed this. And we pray that all of you have really enjoyed this time. We know it's been different. We know it's a different format. It's not like what you've experienced previously, but isn't that good? Can you just let us know in the comments right now, like how you feeling, like what has God been doing? And just to encourage the community here, we are a family, we are a community. I'm excited about this book giveaway. I can't wait to hear um, from all of you again by going to our website, going to connect, going to submit praise report and really hearing your story. It matters to Pastor Darren and myself, but not just to us, to everybody that's part of GRC online. And pass it down, right? We just want to encourage everyone. If this has blessed you, share this with friends, with family, with neighbors, people that like you do life with. We just want to really continue to believe together with you that God's doing something right where you're at. Just like we heard with Martel, grace and truth came. So I want to encourage you, it's on demand again. You can go to the website, the link on the screen is there and you can watch it however you would like, take your time, keep on hearing and keep on believing that the Lord is transforming. Even if you don't see anything, he is doing more than we even realize. So we had such a good time and we can't wait to see you for the next digital care group. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you again sometime soon. God bless you.